Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. How, how many of you know I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We just give God praise today. Aren't you glad to know Jesus? Hallelujah. We just welcome you in the name of Jesus today. Welcome to World Missions Ministries. It is a privilege to come once again into your presence with the living and the unadulterated word of God. Hallelujah. How many of you know the spirit of God has a word for us today. Amen. How many have arrived, have come with hearts ready to receive the word of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Please keep the lights. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So we're going to look to the word this morning and we're going to continue essentially from what we were learning last week. Hallelujah. I tell you, last week was one of the most significant messages that I had ever received. It was one of the most significant messages. And if you were not able to hear it, please, please go back over and uh, on Spotify or wherever you're receiving it and listen to it again. It's a message that you need to hear over and over and get deep within your spirit he, uh, Pastor Turkson last week was talking about the manifestation of your expectations. Oh my goodness, it was, it was absolutely life-changing. And we're going to continue along those lines even this week. Hallelujah, for the Spirit of God still has more to share. Let's just open up with the Word of God. We thank, we just welcome all visitors, all those watching, those in this country, those in other countries across the world. Welcome to World Missions Ministries. Hallelujah. Where the darkness of Satan's power is over and the true light of Jesus Christ shines forever. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we, we come right now in your presence. We thank you that we can come within the veil, even by the blood of Jesus. We come in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, to thank you, to give you glory, to give you praise, for you alone deserve it, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, that you commune with us and that you teach us and you love us. We're grateful for it, Father. And even now, as we look to the mirror of your word, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is indeed our teacher, to teach each and every one of us, to minister individually exactly what we need. We thank you, Father, that your promise is that signs will follow the going forth of your word. So we pray, Father, that all that is spoken will be nothing but the oracles of God. We pray, Father, that as ministry goes forth, that that ministry occurs according to the ability which God gives, so that in all things, people don't walk away saying, oh, she preached that word, but rather they say God was glorified in all things. May you, God, be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion, both now and forever. If somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Last week, we learned about the manifestation of your expectations. Powerful, powerful, powerful. We learned that there's a reason why your present situation may not match the promises of God's word. We learned that what you focus on, what you concentrate on, what you dwell upon, 
And when you dwell upon the facts of the situation, that, that whatever you give your attention to, that is what you end up giving power to, and that thing will end up manifesting. We learned that whatever you imagine, you'll manifest. Better yet, whatever you mirror, you will manifest. Whatever, hallelujah, whatever reflection you accept is what will manifest. And whatever it is that you dwell on, we end up creating an environment for that thing that you're dwelling on to grow and to flourish. So if you're dwelling on negative things, if you're dwelling on what's not happening or how terrible life is or why things aren't happening, if that's what we're dwelling on, then we're creating an environment for that to flourish and for that to manifest. Whatever we mirror is what manifests. I encourage you to truly review again and again the lesson from last week. It is absolutely life changing. We learned how the enemy will try to exploit your vulner vulnerabilities by showing you images in the hopes that you'll accept those images because he understands, the enemy understands that what you mirror will manifest. So he sends up images so that you will accept them, receive them, and mirror them, and then that would become your living experience. And along with that, let's just look at uh, Genesis chapter 11. Genesis 11, we'll start there, and I just want you to hold on tight, because the Spirit of God is just going to continue to minister these truths to us, even today. And I believe that many of us will be blessed Hallelujah. I, be, I believe that, that the distance between where you are and God's promise to you will collapse as we, as we receive and apply the truths of the word of God. In Genesis 11 and verse 6, there, there was an occurrence where there were uh, the pe people on earth and they all spoke one language. And they had a mind to build a city and a tower that would go up to the heavens. And the purpose of building that tower was to worship the stars, astrology, and all that sort of thing. And so in, it says, in fact, let us, let us look at verse 4. It says, and they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. It's really referring to the heavens. They wanted to worship stars. And it says, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5 says, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, verse 6, Genesis eleven six. 6, the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. And so again, the, the principle here is what you imagine will come to pass. Nothing will be restrained from what you imagine to do. So if you focus on, you're thinking about, you're mulling over, you're meditating on something, whatever you're imagining to do is going to come to pass. There's no restraint. Nothing's going to prevent it from coming to pass. It will be your living experience. What you consider, what you take hold of, what you embrace, what you look upon, what impresses you, whatever you take into your head, whatever you take into your heart, that will come to pass. There'll be nothing to restrain it from happening. It will come to pass. It will be your living experience. Now, we have to understand these things because there are truths in the word of God. The Bible provides truth. His word is true. And there are principles 
that govern. These are hard and fast rules. These, these are just as reliable, just as regular as like the, the laws governing mathematics. You know, one plus one is two. It's just as precise, it's just as exact as the you know, physics and the physical sciences, right? Mathematics, aerodynamics, astrodynamics, thermodynamics. You know, that's why we're, it's because of the reliability of the rules and principles that we understand that we are able to fly people to the moon, right? We even have, we even have, um, who is it, a different people, Bezos and these guys going up into space and coming down commercially now, right? Be but it's because of the application of the rules. There are certain rules that govern. There, there are Newton's laws of motion, right? There are dyna the dyna dynamics of systems under the influence of gravity. These are rules that are reliable. They are exact. They are precise. You know, I think about the woman, what's her name, Katherine Johnson. Remember the movie Hidden Figures? This was a genius mathematician, and they utilized her calculations in the space program. She worked for NASA, and you know, there were some, she calculated launch windows. She calculated rendezvous points, you know? But you had to apply the rules, and those rules had to be reliable. They, are, they will work every time you work them. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. And see, people have unlocked the mysteries of principles like mathematics, and it has aided mankind. The fact that I can stand here with a, a microphone without a cord is a testament to how these principles have been applied to the aid of mankind. Similarly, there are principles of the Word of God, and as you unlock the mysteries of the principles, they can aid you in life. You can be successful in life. Hallelujah. The principles of the word of God are just as equally reliable as the principles that these mathematicians and the scientists and all that, that, that they rely upon. They came from God. And this word comes from God. And when he speaks it, it is so these principles are exact, they are reliable, and they will work if you work it. Hallelujah. And they apply whether you believe it or not. They're in operation. And so we learned last week that, there, that your expectations will manifest, the manifestation of your expectations. And we're going to continue to discuss that, but I, the topic is your expectation is your destination. Your expectation is your destination. Whatever you expect, whatever you imagine, it's going to come to pass. Come with me to Proverbs 23 and verse 18. Proverbs 23. And verse 18, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 18, look at what it says. It says, for surely, surely, it is a sure thing. It is exact. It's going to happen. This is a surety. You can take this to the bank. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. To be sure, you need to know and understand this is a sure thing. This is the truth. This is a rule. This is a principle. This is, this is an operation. This happens. There is an end. There is a destination. There is a place that you wind up. Every expectation 
takes you somewhere. There's a destination for every expectation. Are you getting this? There is an end. Whatever you're expecting, you're going to go there. There is a destination for every expectation. So what are you expecting? Because there is a destination for what you are expecting. Hallelujah. That word, it says, for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. That word expectation in the Hebrew is this word tikva, T-I-Q-V-A-H. It's like the, the phonetic spelling, tikva. It is also the word used for hope. I remember years ago, I ministered, the Lord gave me this word on the door of hope. I think pastor had it as well. And the, it was a scripture in Hosea. And it said, um, for the valley of Achor, there's a door of hope. And at that time, I, that word hope, same word, tikva. And it means an attachment, a cord, C-O-R-D, a cord and an attachment. And I remember the spirit giving me that revelation, how even if you're in the valley of Achor, Achor was a place where this whole family got stoned to death because they had sinned against God and had hidden the stuff when they were, when uh, they had gone to Jericho, they had the, 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 the victory at Jericho. And then they tried to go further, but the, there are people who had hidden some stuff. They weren't supposed to take anything. They hid the stuff. They were called out. The family was called out. They were stoned to death in a place called the Valley of Achor. It was a bad place where, you know, they, they, they received this, the, the, the recompense. They were, they were just slaughtered. They were stoned to death. Not only the person who stole the stuff, but his whole family, all his possessions, everything was stolen. And yet with, through Jesus Christ, instead of the Valley of Achor, that place of death, there was a door of hope. That hope was like an attachment to pull you up out of that valley of Achor into, hallelujah, a new expectation. Are you understanding this? So, but the word hope there is the same word here, tikva. It means attachment. It means cord. So you are tethered to your expectation. Are you understanding this? It is, there is something that attaches. Whatever you expect, you're attached to it. That word expectation is cord, attachment. So there's a destination for every expectation. And whatever you expect, you get attached to it. So it pulls towards you and you pull towards it. Are you understanding this? So if you keep thinking that I'm just a mess, my life is messed up. If that's your expectation, you get attached to it. And there's nothing that's going to restrain you that that's going to be your living experience. If that is your hope, that's your expectation. It's tethered to you. This is a spiritual principle and it works just as effectively as the laws of mathematics, aerodynamics, astrodynamics. We have to get this. If you get this, you can soar. Just as people understood these principles, these scientific principles that enables them to soar, if you understand this and apply it correctly, you can soar. There's no limit to what you can do in life. Hallelujah. Are you understanding this? You will reach that expected end. It says, surely there is an end and your expectation will not be cut off. You are going to reach that des the destination of your expectation. You're tethered to it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you something. We're here. Let's, let's look at Proverbs 
10. Proverbs 10 and verse 28. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 10, verse 28. It says, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Do you see that? See, there's an end. You get tethered to it. If, you, if your expectation is consistent with the word of God, doing, being that which is right, you get attached to it. You can't help but experience the end of that expectation. And the word of God tells us that the end of that expectation is what? Gladness. You see that? Gladness. Hallelujah. You, I'm telling you, you'll be so glad, gladness. If things turn around, you start jumping up with joy. You are so happy. You're so great. That is the end of the expectation of the righteous. Do you see this? Oh, Jesus, I love it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. You, you understand? So if, if you have expectations that are consistent with the wicked, there's an end to that expectation. And it's not good. But the hope, the expectation of the righteous is gladness. There is an end. Hallelujah. You get tethered to it. I'm telling you that word tikva, it means cord, attachment. It's a tether. You get tethered to it. If you say hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So. If you are thinking, nothing ever goes right for me. How come all these terrible things always happen to me? Why can't I ever seem to get ahead? That, that is not consistent with righteous expectation. That is what the Bible describes as a vain imagination. It is, you're imagining a vain thing. And whatever you're thinking about, if that's your perception. That's exactly what's going to show up in your life. This is a truth. This is a principle. It is a rule. It's governing whether you, ex whether you agree with it or not, whether you say she don't know what she's talking about, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm just reading to you what the word of the Lord says. And it doesn't matter what you think about it, how you, whether, you know, it's, you think it's true or not, it is operating. <laughs> it, it just is. It just is. There is a destination for every expectation. So what you expect to happen in your life, that's what's going to show up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, it is important to have an earnest expectation of good. Hallelujah. Because if you don't change the expectation, you're going to reach the destination of your expectation. Surely there is an end. Now see, this can be great news, or it can be not so great news. It depends on your expectation, right? If you have an earnest expectation of good, you think, in accordance with the word of God, God's coming through for me. By his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Prosperity, peace within my house. 
prosperity within my palaces, peace within my walls, prosperity within my palaces. If that is your expectation, do you know what you end up with? Peace within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it depended on your expectation. Hallelujah. This could be good or bad. You understand? Thank you, Jesus. And if you've been maintaining these thought patterns, expect, oh, oh, just expecting things to be bad, expecting tomorrow to be just like yesterday, expecting that this condition will never change. This child will never change. My financial condition will never change. He, it, things will never get better. Why, do I, why is, does this have to be my lot in life? I encourage you today to change your expectation. You can be tethered to something else. You can be tethered to that which is good. You can be tethered to the true light. You can be tethered to the truth of the word of God. You can be tethered to the promises of God that are yes and amen. And you can alter your expectation and thereby change your destination. Is anybody here today? Hallelujah. 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 It's hallelujah. See, these expectations, they are formed on the basis of what you think about. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And what, it's not every thought. It's not every thought. It's the thought that you accept. It's the image that you accept because as we learned last time even the enemy comes and shows you things places thoughts in your head so that you can form images of them so that you can see what he has designed for you because what you accept you expect what you accept you expect the thoughts that you, ex that you accept form your expectation. The thoughts that you accept, they become your expectation. That's why you don't receive every thought. The thoughts that you act, what you accept, you expect. Look, if you accept an offer of employment, you expect to have a job. If you, ex if you accept a marriage proposal, you expect there to be a wedding, right? What you accept, you expect. If you accept an invitation to dinner, you expect to eat. What you accept, you expect. Is anybody receiving anything today? Is this helping anybody today? That's why, see, last time we were told that we had the ability to cast down imagination, right? All those thoughts that want to exalt themselves. Like, oh, my goodness. Maybe we should just look at it. Because what you accept you expect. Where is that? Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, right? Hallelujah. Let's just go there. This is a life changing message. I, when I heard that last week, I was just gobsmacked. I was, I was, I was, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. So we see this second uh, Corinthians 10, Verse 5, it tells us, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. So that's letting us know that we don't have to accept every thought, correct? 
If we didn't have a choice, we wouldn't have this scripture. We've been given the authority in the name of Jesus. This is written to the church at Corinth. It's written to believers. Believers have the authority. We can cast down imaginations. We can cast down those thoughts. We can cast down those things that want to lead us to the destination of the enemy's expectations. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. Your expectations are formed on the basis of what you're thinking. Of course, you are the head of my life. Lord, I give my life to you. Hallelujah. Do something with my life, Lord God. I trust, I trust my life to you. I believe you are the son of God. I believe you came and died and rose again. I believe you are seated at the right hand of the father and I invite you into my heart. Then this applies to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now Jeremiah 29, 11, look at what it says. See, God has, oh goodness, the thoughts that you ex accept become your expectation. And, they, and that provides for your, that destination. Every expectation has a destination. There is an end. Every expectation has an end. Every expectation has a destination. And those expectations come from thoughts that you accept. And God has some thoughts about you. There are things that God has accepted concerning you. It's recorded in Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says, for I know <laughs> the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord. Thoughts of peace mm -mm -mm. and not of evil to give you, the King James Version says, an expected end. Do you see how this works? Those thoughts that you accept Form your expectation. And for every expectation, there is a destination. God's thoughts towards you form expectations. That the expectations of God have an end. There's a destination that God has for you. He calls it an expected end. Other versions, they say a future and a hope. He wants you tethered to his expectations. And it's for every area of your life. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace. And of course, we realize that that word peace is what? Shalom, right? Shalom. It means well-being. It means prosperity. It means health. It means wealth. Are you understanding this? Glory to God. It means welfare. It means all that makes for your greatest good. Hallelujah. This, this is what God has towards you, the thoughts that he has towards you. It means favor. Look at that again. See, you have to understand the context, what that means. It doesn't just simply mean, oh, everything's just peaceful and quiet. No, that word shalom, his thoughts, he has thoughts of well-being, affluence, blessings, favor, health, prosperity, safety, rest, glory. To, that is embodied in shalom. He has 
thoughts of you. Yeah, that's what he thinks about you. That's what he thinks is your expected end. Rest, safety, security, health, well-being, prosperity, goodness, gladness, favor, safety. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. That's what his thoughts are towards you. That's, that's his expectation for you. And there's an expected end. If we simply align with him, we get tethered to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And those thoughts, you know, so it's so interesting because sometimes we're, we're, we're in particular dilemmas and we don't know how God's going to move. Or better yet, we start praying and we start telling God how he should move. God, I want you to do it and I want you to do it this way. Amen. God help us. Amen. But he says, I know <laughs> the thoughts that I think towards you and trust and believe they outnumber the, the types of scenarios that you can devise to get you out of your dilemma. Hallelujah. Look, you're there. If you're there, we're at Jeremiah 20, 29, 11. Let's hold that. And then look at Psalm 139. Are y'all learning something today? Oh, God is just awesome. Oh, this is life changing. If I just line up with God's expectations, oh my goodness, there's no restraint. I can't help but reach it. Hallelujah. Nothing will be restrained from me to, to achieve that, the, the destination of that expectation. For surely there is an end. It is sure. The hallelujah. The words of the Lord, they are sure. They are true. They are reliable. Hallelujah. God is unfailing. I'm going to reach that destination. Praise be to all my God. And his expected end for me is shalom. His expected end for me is welfare. It is health. It is prosperity. It is safety. It is rest. It is that which makes for my greatest good. Hallelujah. It, it, it is well-being. It is favor. Glory to God. That's his thoughts towards me. That's the expected end that he has towards me. And that's the expected end that he has towards you. Hallelujah. And we spend our time thinking if it doesn't happen this way, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. But he says, uh -uh, don't worry about it. I already got the thoughts. I, or, hallelujah. I, 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 there, there's so many. It's beyond. Look, even the enemy cannot figure out what I've already prepared. Are you See, Psalm 139. Look at verse 17. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Mm -mm -mm. Now remember, every thought is a thought of shalom. Shall every thought that God thinks towards you is shalom. It is your safety. It is your health. It is your well-being. It is your prosperity. Hallelujah. It is your favor shown towards you. Every thought is shalom. And here it says, oh, they're precious. Oh, how great is the sum of them. Verse 18, if I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. Oh, Jesus. Have you ever tried to count the sands on the beach? Think about it. His thoughts towards you. The, the, the many different manners, ways, thoughts huh, that he has already prepared to ensure that you are tethered to your God-given destination. That expectation. It will not be cut off. Hallelujah. So things didn't go well this time, but God's not finished. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? God's not finished. You just, you cannot, you just have to maintain that expectation. Keep it in alignment with God's expectation for you, which he puts in his word. Hallelujah. He has so many ways to get to the, more than the number of the sand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can you count the grains of sand in a beach, 
in a handful. Hallelujah. There are more than can be numbered. God has your welfare so planned out. Your expected end. Hallelujah. But even as we learned last week, he's seeking our cooperation. Praise God. He says, they're more in number than the sand. Look, he says, when I awake, I am still with thee. Hallelujah. Now, that, that's so interesting. When it says, I am still with thee. That word still means again. Again, it means to testify by repetition. It means again, to testify by repetition. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When I awake, I continue to testify by repetition. I, hallelujah. When I awake, I, you're still, your thoughts are still with me. Hallelujah. I, I still believe you, Lord God. I, I still Speak in accordance with your thoughts. I'm going to repeat what you've said about me, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because the, 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 the thoughts that you have to, towards me, all oh, the thoughts of shalom. Hallelujah. They are more than can be numbered. And I'm going to continue to testify of them every day. Every day I awake. I awake to you, Lord God. I awake to see your expectation for my life. Is anybody understanding this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, God's expectations for you must be something you agree with. For it to become your reality, we have to agree. We have to cooperate. We saw that last week how we are co-laborers together with God. We are co-workers with God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So how do we do that? We have to agree with God's expectations for us. They will come to pass. They will not be cut off. And he's got more ways to make them happen in our lives, then you can number the grains of sand. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. So how do we do that? What do we, what do we do? Last week we learned that we need to use what the word of the Lord says about us in prayer. Excuse me. And we ended by doing just that. We ended by praying. And I just want to share what the Spirit of God instructed me to minister as well. And for that, let us go, I know you know this, but let's just look at it, to Joshua 1.8. Thank you, Lord. I know you know it. Let's look at it. You see, the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. So yes, we, we use the word of the Lord in prayer. It's also expedient and helpful if we take to do exactly what is prescribed in Joshua 1.8. It says we have to meditate 
We have to observe and we have to do. Meditate, observe, and do. Hallelujah. Because then you make your way prosperous. You, 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 you experience the end of your expectation. And you have that good success. You end up with the gladness. The end, hallelujah, the expectation of the righteous is gladness. You end up there. And so I, I was shown that it's important to meditate, to observe, and to do. And it says to meditate day and night. So meditate. I know we all come up in church and we heard meditate means to mutter. I'm just going to make it simple. You have to reflect on the word. Just like last week we heard, you know, you have to, whatever you mirror manifests. So we want to reflect on the word, to give it back, to show a mirror of, to reflect on, to consider we're talking about expressing a thought or an opinion that results from reflection. You take the word of God, praise God, and you start to reflect on it. And you take that word and you make it yours. And you do it day and night. And see, this is what I, this is what I was... Um, this is what I receive. When you wake up, each day that you wake up, you remind yourself of who you are. You know, you come, you're waking up out of slumber. You're like, oh, oh, oh. like you wake up, you say, mm, okay, well, let's see, what day is it? What time is it? Don't you do that? I mean, okay, maybe it's just me. Sometimes I wake up and it's like, oh, what is it? Is it, is it, is it Thursday, Friday? Is it Saturday? What day is it? You, you have to remind yourself of who you are. And you say, oh, well, let's see, do I have any deadlines today? What do I have to do today? Oh, okay, what do I, what I plan to do? I got to do this, I got to do that. Okay, okay. You start to remind yourself of who you are. What do I have to do with the children? Oh, I got to get up. I got to, okay, they have the science project. We have this to do. We have that. Okay, okay, okay. And you, you start to come to yourself, but in that process, you're reminding yourself of who you are. You might say, you may look across and say, oh, yeah, that's right. We had that argument last night. I'm supposed to be holding a grudge against them. I'm going to continue the silent treatment today. You, you wake up. And you decide who you are. Oh, that's right. That child, they disrespected me yesterday. And I told them, okay, yeah, I'm, all right. They wanted to do that. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I, re I remember now. You remind yourself of who you are each day that you wake up. You remember who said what, this and that. And, or you wake up and say, oh, man, I'm just a mess. I'm just, I'm just a mess. You are reminding yourself of who you are every time you wake up. Because you're suspended. You're in a, a state of suspense. You're suspended. Your spirit is moving at, at, at night, but you, you, you're not conscious of it. So you bring yourself to consciousness by reminding yourself of who you are. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And you decide how you're going to greet your day. You decide how you're going to show up. And what you decide sets your expectations. And your expectation leads you to a destination. And the Spirit of God wants us to know Every morning, when we're deciding who we are, he wants us to meditate on his word and what he says we are. Day 
and night. The bookends of your day. You set the expectation based on God's thoughts towards you. They are thoughts of peace, of shalom. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus, I sense the presence of God here. I really sense. They are thoughts of shalom. So you don't wake up saying, I messed up so badly. He says, according to his word, his mercies are new every morning. You decide when you wake up who you are. Everybody does it. Every day when you wake up, you decide what day is it okay now? What am I, what am I going to be? What am I today? And he's saying, he's letting us know that if we want gladness, we want good things, we want God's thoughts towards us, his expected end to be our reality. That in the morning when you wake up, your meditation must be of him. What is he saying about, I, I'm telling you, I had a powerful experience this week, and I'm so grateful for last week's word. Because, you don't know this, but last Sunday, I started to develop a, a nagging pain in my tailbone. And it wasn't really bad. It was just like a, an annoyance, but not terribly bad. Well, Monday, it became more intense. And it started to spread. It seemed like it was like from the tailbone to like the hip joint. And it was just this, this nagging little pain. And, you know... I didn't really think a whole lot of them. Like, oh, what is this? You know, I went on my walk and my jog. I was able to jog a little bit, you know, and, and it wasn't too bad. So I just ignored it, really. And then Tuesday, it became really painful. I had a, a workout plan with my daughter on Tuesday morning, and we, we met up and I couldn't finish the course that we had mapped out because it was just so painful. And, and she was saying, well, do you have your heating pad? And do you have the massager and all that kind of thing? You understand? And um, to be honest, see, I, could, I started thinking about, you know, I could hear my grandmother saying, Oh, my hip is aching me like a toothache. And she would say that frequently. And I'm thinking, oh, this must be what grandma felt. You understand? And, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed by the stripes. But I'm thinking... This, the thought that I had accepted was, oh, this must be what grandma felt. And to be honest, there are other members of my family who have had replacement surgery. And you know, it has been said that there's a congenital type of condition that visits the back, it visits the hip, and to be honest, yeah, I'm say, oh, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed, but I'm thinking about the family members who experience that kind of excruciating pain. By Wednesday, it was so intense that it 
woke me up in the middle of the night. The pain was that intense. I'm telling you, this is not, I, I am not making this up. And I could not walk properly. It was very painful. And I'm not one to take medicines. But I took Tylenol. And I, I don't generally, I took several times just so that I could sleep. And, I, and, and mind you, I know the word that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Let me tell you what happened. I call myself praying. I heard the spirit say, you keep showing up as the collective memory of the past. You keep showing up as the collective memory of the past. Did I not say, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old? I'm telling you, whatever you are expecting, will be your destination. I was instructed, the Spirit just spoke to me. Because you know, you know the word. Oh, Jesus died for me. He took my sicknesses and diseases. I can quote you Isaiah 53, 5. I could do all that. But what are you expecting? I was so, I, you keep showing up as the collected, collective memory of the past. Like you're just collecting all this information. Grandma said this and this relative that, and that person's had a back thing and that person had a hip replacement. That You keep showing up as the collective memory of the past. You must show up in the vision of the word I gave you. Thursday morning, that's what I, you must show up in the vision of the word I gave you. Did I not say, behold, I will do a new thing. Did I not say, remember not the former things? Don't consider that. See, what you consider forms your expectation. And you get tethered to that. And that is going to be your end. Now, I don't want a hip replacement. I don't, I don't want pains all in my body. That's not the end that God has for me. He says, Janice, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of shalom. I've got an expected end for you. But if you don't change your expectation, you're not going to receive it. Hallelujah. I think that's why I, you know, I'm so grateful that I was here last Sunday. I'm so grateful for the word of God. I could go back over it and then apply it because he says in Joshua one, eight, we are instructed to meditate on his word when you wake up in the morning, before you decide who you are, you make sure that that decision is based on the word of God. So you meditate, you reflect on, and then you observe. You see yourself in that word. He, I was instructed to show up in the vision of the word that he gave me. Woo, 
I, that was Thursday morning. And so in my bed, I got quiet. I closed my eyes. And I saw, my, I saw myself doing cartwheels. I saw myself dancing. I saw myself healed. I saw myself as the healed of the Lord. I saw myself jogging without any pain. I saw myself saying, oh my goodness, I have no pain. Where did it go? There's no pain. I meditated until I observed myself in the word that he gave me. Hallelujah. And I was able to change my expectation so that the expectation would line up with the word that he gave me. Because you can quote all the scripture that you want, but if your expectation doesn't line up, your, the, your expectation shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Is anybody learning something today? Hallelujah. And I honestly... Honestly, Thursday, that pain started to just ebb. It just, it just left, left out of my body. It wasn't like immediate, but it got duller and duller and duller and duller. And it was gone. It was, it's gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord. It's gone. I'm myself again. I'm telling you, I, this thing was so powerful. I didn't know how I was going to walk down the stairs. And I'm thinking, that must be what grandma was talking about. Oh, this one visited this family member, that family. Spirit said to me, you show up as the collective memory of the past. You must show up in the vision of the word that I gave you. I had to change that expectation. You have to jumpstart Change your expectation because that expectation becomes your destination. And Joshua 1 8 is saying, do that on the bookends of your day. Even if things didn't go quite as well, the way you wanted to, I mean, when you lay your head down at night and you reflect on your day, you do it through the prism of the word of God and you see yourself. And the whole idea is to meditate. You reflect so that you can observe. And that word observe actually is shamar. Like my daughter's middle name is Samara from Shamara. It's Hebrew. It means to guard or to protect. So you're, you're given the vision. You see yourself in the word and then you guard it. You protect it so that if anything else wants to float through your mind, you can cast that imagination down. You have to meditate, you have to observe, and you have to do. Jesus himself said, you know, okay, the word, uh, wonderful that you know these things, but blessed are you if you do them. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. So the word is telling us mm -mm. that you meditate in that word day and night. You wake up as you're deciding who you are. You make that decision based on God's expectations for you. And you see yourself in it. And you get tethered to that expectation. And there is a destination for every expectation. And that expectation shall not be cut off. It shall come to pass. Anybody understanding this? 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why even the Bible tells us, look at um, Lamentations chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm telling you, I am so happy. I am so happy that, I, that, that God gave me that breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. And look at verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. And this is what we have to do. And if you want to jumpstart your expectation. Lamentation 321. You want to change your expectation to line up with the word of God. It says, this I recall to mind. So you have to take the word of God and recall it to your mind. You take, yes, by his stripes I am healed. But what are you really thinking about? You right? I'm thinking, grandma went through that. This person went through that. That aunt went through that. That, oh, this. Mm -mm. You have to recall to your mind. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have. I rest my case. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have. Hope. What you're thinking about forms your hope, your expectation. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Glory to God. So as you're meditating, you're recalling to mind, and you let that be the thought that you accept. Therefore, you now possess hope. You're now tethered. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he's letting us know what he recalled to mind. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his passion, his compassions fail not. So you're not going under. You're not. I can't be consumed because God's too merciful. God's so merciful. He's got new mercies. Hallelujah. He says, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. So you, I recall to mind the mercies of God. I recall to mind that I have a new slate of mercies. I recall to mind that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. And that, that I get tethered to that. I get tethered to that blessed hope. I get tethered to that assurance that this too shall pass. I get tethered to the truth that God is turning it around in my favor. I get tethered to the fact, hallelujah, that this trouble won't last always. I get tethered to the fact that I'm getting double for my trouble. I get tethered to those truths, hallelujah, because I recall it to my mind and it forms my hope and my hope shall not be cut off. Off. I'm going to make that expected end for every expectation has a destination. Glory to God. Anybody understanding this? Are you receiving something today? Hallelujah. With each breaking of day. Oh, Jesus. We have new mercies. We, we, hallelujah. We can get it right. We can get it right. And the thing is, and I'm so grateful. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful for the word of God. And you must you really have to go back over last week. I'm saying it was a lifesaver because the enemy had planned something for me, had wanted me to go in a particular direction, wanted me to think that this thing, mm -mm -mm, every expectation has a destination. But I learned that last week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I learned how in the Holy Spirit showed me how to change that. He's, how, how are you showing up? How are you showing up? You say one thing out of your mouth. But what's going on up here and in here is something different. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Now, see, some people may say, I'm going to end with this. Some people may say, yeah, that's all about, some people don't, I know some people wouldn't even believe it. They would say, oh, uh, some doctor would probably tell me what it was. And it wasn't, you know, I know what it was. I know, I know what that thing, it was an attack. Nothing, I mean, so excruciating, it wakes you up. Have you ever had a pain to wake you up out of sleep? Oh my goodness, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And see, you can, we can say that. I rebuke that in the name of, but what are you thinking? What are you, what are you expecting? I, I learned that, because I know by the stripes of Jesus, I mean, I could quote you, you know, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I'll take all these diseases away from me. That's wonderful. But what is your expectation? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So you might say, you know, but you don't understand my situation. This thing is really tough. You know, this thing, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the big C, or it's this, or it's that. You, my, I am in a dire strait. You don't get it. I want you to turn to Psalm 63. Thank you, dear Lord. Are you learning something today? Thank you, Jesus. Now, when you look at Psalm 63, I love how there is context given, provided. Before you get to verse 1, we're given some information about where this psalm came from. And it says, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Now, anybody knows anything about the life of David? We know that there were at least two major times when he was in the wilderness. Do you recall that he was running for his life, right? There are two people who wanted to kill him. First was King Saul. Remember Saul? King Saul. And David didn't do anything but good by Saul. You know, he, he was his servant. He worked for him. He played for him. He went out to battle for him, did all of that. And Saul got jealous and thought David was going to take over and all of that. So he wanted to kill him. And so David was running for his life. And he was in the wilderness. Remember that? He's hiding out in caves and all that sort of thing. And, it, and the second time was his own blood. His son Absalom wanted to take his life. And he went on the run again, fleeing into the wilderness. But how many of you know that that's a, that's a tough place to be? You know, you have armies and people hunting you down. And you didn't even do anything wrong, but they're hunting you down to kill you, to take your life. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. Did I say it? You know, when I was in high school, I don't know if I shared this before, but there was a, a gang. See, when I see this stuff on television, I, I you know, you pray, I take it seriously because I've been there. There was uh, the leader of a gang that had a contract out on myself and my sister. Because uh, they, we were attending a youth group. There's a youth ministry. It's called All Together Now, ATN. And it was uh, like two blocks away from the school. And it was this church. And it was a Caucasian church, a Methodist church nice little youth and pastor, and he had this little guitar, and the green grass grows all around and around, and the green grass grows all around, you know, <laughs> and it's true. And we would do uh, arts and crafts, and he would minister the word, and the word got us saved, you know? So I'm grateful for the green grass grows all around, all around, green grass grows. It was that kind of setting. And so there was a gang called the Black Diamonds, and this one Wednesday night, they infiltrated 
they came and they took over. They just bogarted and went up to the room. They started playing whatever kind of music they wanted, put their feet up, everything. Totally disrespectful. And I didn't know that this, they were a gang. But me and my mouth, I went up <laughs> and I started telling them what they weren't going to do and how, blah, 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 blah. Guy looked at me and he was the leader of the gang. His name was Pop. And he got his name because he popped people. So Pop put out a contract on myself and my sister who was with me. So I don't take this lightly. You know, when I see like David running for his life, my sister and I literally ran out of that facility. And where I live, there's nothing but hills. Nothing. We went up Hill, Hill Avenue, matter of fact, it's the name of the street, Hill Avenue. And we just, and it was by the grace of God. And this guy, Pop, had a brother who took a liking to my sister and would tell my sister where they were lying in wait for us so that we could escape. That, that's how I grew up, y'all, okay? So, I mean, you see me, oh, she's a big-time lawyer. But you don't know my story. You really don't know my story. You really don't know my story. But I know the goodness of God. I know the grace of God. I know where he has brought me from. Hallelujah. And he even put people in place to give us the heads up so that we didn't walk home a particular way because it would have ended our lives. That's the truth. I, ain't, I, ain't, I, don't have to make, I do not have to make it up. It is the truth. And eventually, he was apprehended for some other thing he had done. And so he was removed from the community, and we didn't have to deal with Pop anymore. So we have David here. I tell you, God, you, 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 if you could walk in some people's shoes, you can see the glory of God. So David was in the wilderness of Judah. People after his life. And yet, even though there's all that stress, all that tension coming against him, he takes time to write. He's writing about God. And look at what he says. The very first verse. He says, Oh God, Thou art my God. Look what he says. Early will I seek thee. I'm telling you, you meditate day and night. Even in that dire situation where people were trying to kill him, he got his expectation and he decided who he was by seeking God, by meditating on God. Earl, I'm telling you, you have to allow his expectation to become your expectation. And you do that through the, utilizing the bookends of your day. How do you show up? How are you showing up every day? Show up in his expectation. He says, my soul is thirsting for you. My flesh is longing for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see your power and your glory. I'm going to see your power in this situation. Do you see that? He got up early and he meditated to observe. To observe to do. Are you understanding this? And he's saying, regardless of what I'm going through, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. That's why I bless thee while I live. I'm lifting up my hands to your name. Hallelujah. He said, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. This man is, you know, in the woods somewhere, hiding out. But he's saying, but this is what his expectation is. Are you understanding this? My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verse 6, when I remember thee upon my bed, and what? 
meditate on thee in the night watches, bookends of his day. He is showing up, not in the collective memory of the past, but in the vision that God had shown him concerning his future. Are you understanding this? He did it early and he did it on the night watches. Hallelujah. He says, because you've been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. And he starts to prophesy. My soul follows hard after you. Look, verse nine, he says, those that seek my soul to destroy it, they will go down to the lower parts of the earth. He starts prophesying. He, you see, he is seeing the expected end of those who come against him. He is seeing his expected end, his expectation aligned with God's expectation for him. And he got it because he sought him early and he meditated upon him in the night watches to ensure that his expectation was aligned with God's. Are you understanding this? Hallelujah. He says, the king shall rejoice in God. That last verse, I shall rejoice in God. All these people against him. And God delivered him even out of that wilderness situation. Amen. And he experienced the destination of that expectation. And I believe the same for you. The same for you. You think your situation's bad? Is anybody after your life? Hmm. Hallelujah. Because we, and in fact, you know, in 1 Samuel 23, this man was, he was in three different, three different um, strongholds, three different places in the wilderness. He was in Ziph, he was in a place called Moan, and he was in a place called in, in, in Jedi. And each time he was given the heads up to move, go here. The next time, go here. And the third time, when he was in Enjedi, you can find this in 1 Samuel 23, he was completely surrounded by Saul's armies. Completely surrounded. But see, God knows the thoughts. He has so many ways to facilitate deliverance. Hallelujah. Some messenger came and said, Saul, the, the Philistines are rising up. And then he, he ended up leaving. He says, I'll deal with David later. Let's go deal with these Philistines. And they, I mean, I'm telling you, God has so many ways to get you to your expected end. Hallelujah. And that's, that's what I needed to share with us today. Hallelujah. We could count on God. Praise God. I'm telling you, your expectation shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. And whatever your expectation is, that is your destination. But if you understand these things, then all we have to do is change our expectation. Hallelujah. Don't show up as a collective memory of your past. Don't show up talking about what this kid is not doing. He just, he just does this, he does that, he does this, it's just terrible. I don't have money, I don't show up, I'm just broke, I don't have any money, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, it seems like every time I try to get ahead, something happens, Lord, I just don't understand it. I don't, you know, it happened last time, now I, I, you blessed me with this and now I'm back in the same old condition. Don't show up in the collective memory of the past. Not when God is doing a new thing. Not when God has ways to cause you to triumph in every place. Hallelujah. Are you willing to align yourself, to check yourself, so that your expectation is consistent with God's expectations for you? He has an expected end for you. It is of shalom not of evil, to give you an expected end. And that expectation shall not be cut off to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just bless you. Thank you, Father, for your word. <laughs> Your word, which is sure, 
We can rely on your word just as surely as scientists rely on the laws of physics and aerodynamics and they trust the laws and principles to work and operate so that they can send people to the moon and to space and, and various places. And Lord God, we believe your word. And I pray, Father, that this word brings deliverance for all of the times when we have had altered expectations, expectations that deviated from your word. Lord God, I thank you that we have new mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for a slate of new mercies so that we can align our expectations to mirror yours. And that which we mirror will manifest. So I speak over the people of God and decree and declare they are blessed. I speak over you and decree and declare there is an expected end of shalom, an expected end of hell, of favor, of prosperity, of well-being for you and your house in the mighty name of Jesus. And that expectation, make it your expectation. Father, we make your expectation, the expected end that you have for us, we make it our expectation. We align ourselves with you. Spirit, soul, and body. And I thank you, Father, even in advance, hallelujah, that the expectation shall not be cut off, but it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you. You're not, the people of God are not down. We are up. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for the ways of escape. I thank you, Father, for new mercies. I thank you for new opportunities. I thank you for new jobs. I thank you for turnaround in children. Oh, bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you've been believing God for, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We strip away of the thoughts of the past, uh, the way they've been behaving, the things that were said, all the, the noise. We rebuke it. We strip away. It is, it is not what governs us. Father, we just commit them to you. We commend them to you, God, and to the word of your grace. All people who've been irritating, we commend them to you and the word of your grace. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, for the expected end of shalom be manifested in our lives, individually and corporately, Lord God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. The expected end for World Missions Ministries manifest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The shalom, the peace, the goodness, the favor manifest for World Missions Ministries in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The expected end, even for these United States, manifest in Jesus' name. How we have thoughts of good even towards this nation. We bless this nation. We live here. We bless it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just take time even now where you are concerning your situation. Have you been like me? Were you like me? Where you've been, you know, you have scriptures plastered everywhere, but your expectation was not in alignment. Even now, come on, just get, get in alignment now in Jesus' name, whatever that area was. Thank you, Father. And just dedicate yourself to doing that. Hallelujah. Lord, we, we early will we seek you. Even in tough places, early will we seek you. 
We will meditate on you in the night watches. And we will use your word. We will see ourselves in your word. We will use it in prayer. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the stripes of Jesus, you were and are healed. We, we see ourselves healed. Hallelujah. You're blessed coming and blessed going. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. Everything you set your hands to prospers and succeeds. Do you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you meditate to see it? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for what you by your spirit are accomplishing even now. I thank you for mighty breakthroughs, even as I experience breakthrough. So, Father, do that and even more for the people of God. That and more, Lord God, for the people of God. Hallelujah. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for victory. Thank you for deliverance. We bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our expectation is of you, and our expectation shall not be cut off. And for this, we thank you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name. And as the, the Spirit of God continues to descend upon us, and we just, we bask in his presence, for there is such an anointing. There's, I, I just anoint us afresh and anew, Lord God. There is a fresh anointing of the Spirit of Almighty God. Just lift your hands. If you understand what we're talking about, lift your hands and receive. Hallelujah. The visitation of the Spirit of Almighty God. Just receive. Hallelujah. In the sanctuary, in your home, in your car, wherever you are, just receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A fresh anointing. I bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Spirit continue to minister to you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We'll continue in the sanctuary, but for, and for those watching, if you would like to be a, a blessing to World Missions Ministries, you can do so several different ways. You can give by Zelle Transfer, at 571-234-2387, and the name is World Missions Ministries. You can give online at www.wmmchurch.org, and you can hit the donate button, or you can do it by mail, writing to World Missions Ministries, 6805 East Clinton Street, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. Hallelujah. And if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, oh, I invite you to invite him into your heart today. Make, make that change, brother. Make that change, sister. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose from my sins. I believe you're seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe you're coming again. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. I love you. Hallelujah. Just, just, just invite them in. You don't need any special, special words. Just believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and believe that the Lord has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. And I invite you and welcome you to the household of believers. Give you praise. Give God praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting with us online. Until next time, may God richly bless your life. Amen.